Yo, what is up guys? So today we're going to be sharing a Time Magus FDK deck over here, which is totally troll, and I like the Time Wizard is maybe getting its own archetype, some support for it, so I was pretty excited about it. If you are too, drop a like on this video. But let's go ahead and show off this troll Time Magus FDK. And the reason why I say it's troll is you can actually pull it off a lot of different ways, and it's not that hard to pull off, especially in the warrior version of the deck. But it, it's troll because you might FTK yourself. Someone's getting FTK'd. Who is it going to be? Well, it relies off of that coin toss. So basically what it comes down to is he's going to be destroying everything uh, up on the field. And someone's going to be taking massive amounts of burn damage. Uh, so unless you want to run like second coin toss or anything like that, uh, it's a 50-50. It's a gamble. That's the point of it. Uh, and it's kind of funny. But... Nonetheless, I uh, also want to mention something really quick for this play. You don't have to draw Instant Fusion. Uh, I only can play one copy because that's what it's at right now. But alternatively, you can go ahead and make the Predator Plant and then copy Instant Fusion anyways, which you'll see very soon in another replay. And there are multiple ways to actually pull off this FTK. So, called heads, it led to tails, FTK in our cells. There we go. There's a Time Magus FTK on our cells. But like I said, there's multiple ways to play this deck. And I'm going to show you guys what I would consider probably one of the better versions of the deck. There is lots of different ways, again, to pull off this FTK. I think the Warrior one is super consistent, though. So, basically, it becomes uh, an Assault deck. We're going to go ahead and Armageddon Knight, send Cyber Knight, or we can um, go, or Cyber Knight, Cyber Stein uh, to the Graveyard. And then, on top of that, uh, we're going to go ahead and actually send Malicious, and that's going to help us with our Synchro play. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, go ahead and summon all of here over here. And then, we're going to go ahead and make Power Tool Dragon. Power Tool Dragon has the ability to reveal three equip cards, and you reveal three copies of the exact same one. So no matter what, you're going to go ahead and add the Telekinetic Charging Cell. And some of you guys already might be knowing what's going to be going on over here. So we're going to get free discounts to Spose Summon Monsters from the extra deck, which will total up to over 16,000 points of damage, which is required because it is only half the amount of damage that the monster has for the Time Magus' burn effect. So basically, you go ahead and you have Repro Docus, you have uh, number 60 over here, and then we're going to go ahead and summon Cyberstein, convert Cyberstein over to a Psychic Monster, and then equip him with the equip spell that we added, which is Telekinetic Charging Cell. And then we're going to go ahead and activate that effect of Cyberstein, and it's completely for free. You do need to link off, and you can make, sorry, usually you can make whatever you really want. Uh, it just adds a little bit more consistency to the deck. Uh, at this point, you can only really pay once with this, unless your opponent gives you a bunch of life points. So, usually, I, you can't alternatively make Tactically make Serial first so you can negate other plays that your opponent would uh, activate if they activate a um, Spell or Trap uh, in the back row, but more likely they would have negated it way earlier on before this step, so it doesn't really matter too much, but uh, Exterior could be used. So then you go ahead and make Predator Plant, and then Predator Plant from here going to go ahead and have Instant Fusion. You make Time Magus, and then you're going to go ahead and activate the Time Magus effect, and we call Tails, and uh, oof. We FTK'd ourselves again. So, like I said, this is more of a troll deck than anything. There's actually another way to play the deck, but I think you guys get the concept. The uh, the Dark World one was actually quite interesting. So, there's actually an FTK to pull it off with one card, but I'm going to save it for another day because I want to try to perfect uh, the other builds. The, the the one card might be not the most consistent. In fact, I actually have, I have so many. Look, look, you can see there's a Fortune Lady one. There's the Dark World variant over here with the beginning of the end. So this is basically just dangers, just spam board with a bunch of dangers, and then uh, with, of course, some of the uh, Dark Worlds. Uh, you can even summon Grapha if you wanted to, but uh, just basically doing kind of the same concept as the Dinosaur one. Although this one, I would say it's a little bit less uh, consistent. If any of you guys have played Danger Dark Worlds with beginning, then you already know exactly how to play the deck. I uh, basically just spam the board and then uh, I was also trying to mess around with like trade in with Ogopogo I think this one needs a little bit more work. I'm gonna be honest with you guys uh, I'll bounce over the cards uh, for this build because I didn't get to show it off because again It's pretty much the same thing as the dinosaur one, uh, but this one is another way that you can pull it off the uh, The fortune lady one unfortunately requires a little bit of RNG So I'm not gonna recommend that one. Honestly the warrior one is the uh, best variant I would say because it has the most consistent uh, way to play. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, the Sublime Knight X Paladin over here. When you go ahead and equip the Squeak Knight, because I messed up on a few of my replays, uh, Squeak Knight, do not activate the effect of Squeak Knight to convert itself to a tuner, because it makes it so um, you can only spell someone from the extra deck one more time 
for the rest of the turn. So do not activate that effect uh, of Squeak Knight. So uh, you could still technically use this if you want to go ahead and make the Dark Law combo, but uh, that's kind of irrelevant for this deck because the whole way to win is to FTK. And if you're not FTKing your opponent, well, you're FTKing yourself, as you guys saw. But I would say this is like the, the better version of the deck. Uh, so of course we got Malice over here, we got Photon Thrasher. It's just basically uh, cards that can summon themselves like Junk Forward. You can run that card as well. Um, which we have three copies of and then we have uh, the nemesis quarter this card's important um, We didn't add it to my hand because I didn't need to but you may need to add this card to your hand To summon it to be a level four to go into number 60 for the rank four play depending on where you are actually going off with your combo, but It's just like two copies of the uh, corridor and then we've got the Armageddon Knight uh, Armageddon Knight is kind of important for the deck because it's the only way to get cyber sign into the graveyard so if you happen to use Vion uh, and send Mali with your soul play, you do have to send the Cyberstein to the graveyard unless you have it in your hand or if you want to try to RNG it. You can honestly have a pretty good chance because this deck can very, very consistently make two copies of Saryudra. And at that point, you're almost halfway into your deck because the deck does deck thin quite easily with, of course, a soul being able to send all those uh, equips. And on top of that, you have the Golden Bamboo and you can potentially draw an extra two cards. Uh, but... Keep that in mind as well. Uh, Armageddon is going to be the one that's going to send it to the graveyard. I actually was originally going to do a, a road. I mean, you can see it over here. Road Synchron. So Road Warrior will also let you get a, um, a Cyberstorm. Road Warrior. This card over here lets you get a level 2 or lower Warrior or Machine type from your deck. Which is really, really good. Which will also let you do it with a, a lefty-righty combo. I, I will. That one's very complex. I'll make a separate video for that one. But uh, anyways, we got three copies of Olivier. So this is uh, the card where it's going to go ahead and be able to uh, summon itself, which is uh, quite great. And that's going to allow you to go ahead and go right into your Power Tool Dragon plays. Um, so you can send a Fire Warrior or an Equip Spell from your hand or face up on the field to the graveyard and you spell summon it from your hand. So uh, this card is quite good just for the, again, Power Tool Dragon plays. It's pretty much what you need. Unless you already have it, then you can bypass that and you don't need to go ahead and use it. And then we've got uh, Vion again for Mali. It's basically just one card uh, going to your soul combos. And then we have the Nemesis uh, Umbrella over here. And then we have three copies of the X Paladin. Uh, this card will let you go ahead and have Squeak Knight. Squeak Knight can be considered a tuner if you activate its effect, but I could very rarely see you being able to pull off the combo when you convert him to a tuner. It, it just realistically isn't viable. Uh, so don't activate the effect to convert him to a tuner. Just make sure you don't do that. And then Jug Forward again, it's just basically more card, one card of soul combos. And then we have Nemesis uh, Flag over here. And that's gonna go ahead and make sure you go ahead. Usually the combo is to add water or the umbrella, but in this instance for this combo, if you need the uh, level four to go into the rank four of number 60 to get back the cyber sign that you dump into the graveyard, uh, Nemesis uh, flag add the corridor. That's the important part. Uh, cyber sign, obviously you need him. And then we got Squeak Knight, we got Instant Fusion, Reinforcement of the Army, and then Golden Bamboo Sword. Uh, we got double copies of Call, but you can run triple if you want. We got different dimension on it, reincarnation, just in case your opponent happens to have a hand trap. I guess the, the, this lets you play through one negate. This deck can only really play through one negate. It depends on when they activate it. Obviously with Call, you can maybe play with two if you have this and like a DDR or something. Uh, but then we've got Living Fossil, Broken Bamboo Sword. I guess this could technically play through a hand trap too. Then we have Phoenix Blade, another tip on one dimension. I don't know if it was shown off in the replay on that one particularly, but when you use Divine Sword Phoenix Blade, uh, to add, make sure you just activate it to add it to your hand before you activate Star Yuja for an additional card that you can just go ahead and put back if you want to because it doesn't really have that much utility after you use Olivier's effect because you just equip it to a Mali or anything and then you get a special summon Olivier for free if you even need to because sometimes you don't need to go for this part of the play again if you happen to have the uh, telekinetic charging cell already or the cyber sign again there's a lot of different ways to play this deck um, I was even thinking about, again, Road Warrior. That's another way that you can play, and you can just special summon it real easy. Uh, but then you need to go ahead and add this. Uh, the Repro Dokus and all that stuff, that's pretty consistent. You don't need to worry about that. But Living Fossil Guest, let's play through Hand Trap. We have the Bamboo Engine. Then three copies of this. Uh, this card, don't don't even... You, you could drop this card completely. I just needed a another Equip spell, and I just... I, I, I typed in Psychic, and I just added this card. You can play a much better card. Uh, in fact, I'll probably recommend you guys to play Power of the Guardians. Um... Uh, Power of the Guardians, or like any other equipped spell that you want. There's probably some better options. Uh, you can play uh, the one that, uh, what is it? Uh, premature, it's like the other Premature Burial card. Uh, what, what do they call it in TCG? I forgot what they called it. There's a, what was it? Overdone Burial? 
Yeah, you discard one and then you can go ahead and summon it. And so what, what's excellent with this card is if you want to, you can go ahead and add whatever card you want with a soul. And because that card will be doing nothing anyways, you can go ahead and activate this and then bring back another level 4 monster and then you'll be A-OK. -okay. Uh, so you'll be good. Uh, but as far as extract, the only thing that's really important is triple copies of Blue's Ultimate Dragon and Neos. You just uh, slam like six of these and you'll be good to go. Um, and then the extract, obviously we need Tamagus. Uh, Millennium Eyes was just used for blocking combos. It's not really that usable in this because you need Instant Fusion to pull off the FTK to summon Time Magus in the first place. There's no alternate way other than Instant Fusion. If you want to play a Poly, I mean, it does require Time Wizard, so that's a pretty cool card anyways. Then we got... Uh, the Millennium Eyes, Power Tool Dragon, and then number 60, Sorry Jerry Gunfly 2. Make sure you guys don't skip out on two copies of that. And then we have Assault. We have Halki uh, Firebrax over here. This card could be excellent. Again, this is more so when I was originally going to try out the Rogue Synchron variant of the deck to go ahead and pull it off. And there's also Reprodocus in the Proto Plant. This card can be dropped for this build, but there's a lot of ways to pull off this FTK, guys. It's just not limited to this version. And I know I did show off the uh, Dinosaur one. I actually was building like several different versions. I think this, this one was the one I liked. Yeah, okay. So what I really like was... Uh, Uninterrupted Kaiju Slumber, because if you give them a token, you do have to pop something uh, on the, the, the board uh, for this effect. But nonetheless, when you pop your own baby dinosaur, you will actually get its effect. And even going further into like the, this dinosaur ring, because we did mix in the dangers to have a little bit more consistency, on not only being able to pull off the FTK, but also throwing out enough damage up on the board. Um, this card over here, Waterfront, plus specifically Rydan, the multi-dimensional Kaiju, if you guys didn't catch it in the replay uh, with the dinosaur version, I had the ability to summon a lot more tokens, but the entire board was clogged up. Uh, if I wanted it opened up with Waterfront, Waterfront would allow me to go ahead and search out the Raidan, and then this card will also technically be able to search out your, uh, what is it, you can add one Kaiju monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, so specifically going for that ability, and also this one has the effect where uh, you can add one Kaiju monster by banishing it. but. Usually that effect doesn't matter because you just go off anyways. But uh, specifically with Waterfront, being able to add the Raidan after you give your opponent one of the Kaijus, what you do is you link off your Kaiju for one of your plays. Then you go ahead and follow up with Raidan over here. And then uh, Raidan will go ahead and give you a token as long as you still happen to have this up on the board, you remove those counters, and then you get an extra 2800 token over here, and then that's basically another 1400 points of damage uh, that you'll be able to deal to your opponent. Uh, but uh, I do like Black Arm because, again, it does block a lot of the chains, which is awesome over here. But this was like the dinosaur variant that I was playing as well. Uh, and I'd say, like, you could pull it off, again, relatively consistent uh, in the Warrior deck. This one could still pull it off. And again, at the end of the day, I mean, you're, you're throwing a bunch of Kaijus and dinosaurs, so the deck can function uh, and stand alone on its own. It doesn't have to pull off the FTK to be a viable uh, deck. Although you probably would need to fix up the extra deck. Originally, if you guys wonder why there's so many time magnuses over here, I was originally thinking of Extravagance uh, to go ahead and add into the deck just for, for extra draw power. Uh, you can't really play Desires unless you really want to go for super RNG and you don't want to go ahead and uh, risk uh, getting rid of Instant Fusion. Yeah, don't play uh, the Pot of uh, Desires here. But I just wanted some extra draw power for the deck. Uh, and originally that's what I was going to do. This variant, you don't need these because it's not the Cyberstein variant. I was, you can see I was even testing out other cards. I was even thinking that Malefics could even maybe pull it off too. Again, we're in kind of testing phases here for Time Magus. And then the Ascendant of Thunder over here is another card where you can just special summon. It has a bunch of stats on it. So not only can you link off going to Saryuja, but more importantly, it has a bunch of stats. So you can just go and special summon it. And when Time Magus has that effect where it's going to be popping everything and deal the uh, damage equal to half the combined original attack. Uh, yeah, it's just extra damage. Could be an okayish card for that. It's also level 7, so you can go ahead and make some, uh, you know, Draco Sack tokens, maybe go into some other plays. I think there's a lot of potential with Time Magus, and I think it was quite a cool card, but I just wanted to make some FTKs. At the end of the day, it was more of a troll than anything, uh, so... Unless, of course, you have like 100% weight to go ahead and pull off like a second coin flip, which again, it still doesn't make it 100% of the time. Uh, let me know, guys, what other builds can emerge out of Time Magus, because I think he's a really cool card. I just want to share this FTK with you guys. But anyways, if you guys got any suggestions for other ways we can make uh, Time Magus either more consistent or be able to pull off the FTK, uh, let me know in the comment section below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you are new here, subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss out on more crazy Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, FTKs and combos and we'll probably show off the one card one it just 
it's just gonna take a while uh, to get it perfected. And I wanna see if, how consistent we can get the one card one. But that's a video for another day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you guys wanna send me any replays, feel free to send it to Asia's replays at gmail.com. And thanks for tuning in, and I'm signing out. Peace.